Imagine a mountain that, the closer you get to the top, becomes steeper and steeper. The last thousand feet or so is virtually straight up. Now imagine that the ground of that same mountain, as you climb higher and higher, becomes more and more densely covered with big chunks of rocks. I'm not talking about gravel here, I'm talking about rocks. Some were the size of large potatoes, many others quite larger. That's Crow Patrick in Ireland, and I was thrilled to be able to climb it in 2007. I thought I was in good shape when I started climbing. I did pretty well the first hour. The closer I got to the top, the more difficult the climb. I walked mainly by myself, although I'd encounter people on the way. They would wish me a good luck and a safe journey, and they continued on their way. As I was climbing up Crow Patrick, there was a woman coming down who slipped in front of me and broke her ankle. I heard her ankle snap. I stopped and sat with her until her husband caught back up with her. He was further down the mountain. After I saw this woman fall, I climbed a little farther and stopped to rest. A man was coming up the mountain and stopped to speak with me. I told him about the woman I had seen break her ankle. He had seen her as well. He told me, you have to plant your foot and slide. Don't be afraid to slide and let the mountain take you. Don't be afraid of that. It's the only safe way to get down. Plant your foot, slide, plant your foot, slide again. You'll make it. Don't worry, he told me. I started noticing the farther I got up the mountain, that was exactly what the seasoned veterans were doing as they were coming down. I made it to the top. I was the last one from my group I was with to make it. St. Patrick is said to have fasted on the summit of Crow Patrick for 40 days in the fifth century and built a church there. I saw the church, which of course was not the same one that Patrick built. I also saw the place where tradition has it that St. Patrick slept at the top of Crow Patrick. What a view he had from the top of that mountain. I felt close to God up there, indeed on the entire trip up the mountain. I prayed all the way up and all the way down. I prayed at the top. I realized a few things from this experience. The trip or pilgrimage up and down the mountain was and is a metaphor for our spiritual journey. It's not the pace that we keep, but the quality of the experience that matters. Many can and do try to race to the top. In a way, it's kind of sad, for they may miss stops with beautiful views in their hurry to get to their destination. I'm not dismissing the experience of those who are focused on the destination. I'm saying that sometimes it's nice to stop and look around, take in where you are and where you're going, and then continue on the journey. The people we meet on our journey can be blessings to us, or they can throw us off a little. The woman who fell took me off my course to help her. In a way, it was a great experience being a calm presence in the life of someone who was at that moment in pain and very scared. She took me out of my concern for myself and my own safety as I focused on her. I'm eternally grateful to the man who gave me the hint about planting my foot and sliding. We find guides along our faith journey, guides in the church especially. Yet, our guides can come together from all kinds of places, a chance encounter in a store where someone says something that rings so true for ourselves and for our journeys. This is the inbreaking of God, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And our work on this part of our journey is to hear, open our hearts to hear what is being offered to us. Being part of a community of faith, we acknowledge that we are all on a journey. Our journeys are not on smooth roads. Oftentimes our journeys of faith are rocky. We move forward only to move backward as I did oftentimes slipping down while going up Crow Patrick. In Celtic Christianity, God is infused in everything, and the journey is to see that and to make that part of our lives. I invite you as we move into Holy Week and Easter in the next few weeks to look at your journey. Where are you and where are you going? Who is helping you or has helped you being a blessing to you? Who are you helping or have helped? And who are you being a blessing to? Give thanks and pray for these people. And always remember, on your journeys of faith, if the going gets tough, don't be afraid to plant your foot and slide. God will be there with you.